In the opening scene, we hear Enzo's voice in the background. He explains how he's been trying to propose properly to Monica even though she has already said yes, but all his plans have gone haywire as Monica is almost always distracted by something or someone. Even with all these, their relationship remains wonderful. Enzo is excited as he has prepared yet another proposal inviting all her friends. This time he chose to propose the school at where she works. Upon reaching the school for the event, he stops the band he invited from playing. The event is successful but during the principal's speech, he sends out all the children, leaving behind the faculty. Then, he breaks the news of his retirement and the appointment of the new principal, Monica Grabarczyk. Everyone is excited and happy. Monica isn't surprised, she takes to the stage with confidence. She's grateful for the opportunity to become the principal, and has never felt ready for anything else, promising to take the school into the 21st century. As she's talking, she suddenly feels nauseous and leaves the stage immediately to throw up, making the crowd confused and worried. Enzo and his friends are waiting for Monica in front of the female restroom, and he's disappointed, as his plan has failed yet again. He then pays the band so they can leave. His friends question him about Monica's recent behavior and mood. Enzo thinks it might be just food poisoning, but one of his friends mentions the possibility of pregnancy, which surprises Enzo. At home, Monica and Enzo are quiet as they test with the pregnancy test kit. It confirms that she is indeed pregnant. Enzo then takes the ring from where he hid it, going on one knee, and then proposing to her. Monica is overcome with joy as she accepts the ring, and of course, they kiss. At the gym in the next scene, Enzo informs Andazedge, his older brother, that he is to be his best man. Stefan is surprised that he wants to do a church wedding, since he'll need to go to their old parish to get a baptism or confirmation certificate. This means they'll have to meet with Father Victor, their uncle. Panicking, they quickly check if he's still there and after confirming it, Andazedge runs away from the gym, saying he won't go, and Enzo is left wondering why the guy won't even see his uncle. At work, Monica enters the staff room, welcoming them to a regime with her as the lead and asking them to behave as normal because they're already used to each other. Later, she notices an increase in workload since two staff members are on maternity leave. On her way to meet her father at the store, Monica hesitates as she passes by the medical center. Her father wants her to eat healthy, even though the pregnancy is still at an early stage. Nevertheless, she appreciates that people care for her during such time. Monica's disposition makes Alexandra, a friend of her father's, think that she's not happy to be pregnant. But Monica assures her that she's happy, just a little perplexed. Alexandra invites them for dinner with her son, Damien, who just returned from Chicago. In the next scene, Monica is standing in the middle of a mall filled with baby products while she listens to the complaints of mothers, who are welcoming her to motherhood, but in an anxiety-inducing way. Then, Enzo walks up to her with a lot of baby products, smiling as he calls her name. In the next scene, Monica wakes up and Enzo shows her a teddy bear he saw online, a gesture that she finds off-putting. Enzo prepares for his livestream excitedly, but things go downhill quickly when he tries to make an off-color joke about children's car seats, he loses a lot of viewers due to this. The dinner with Alexandra and Damien takes a turn for the worse when Damien starts boasting about his career. He and his working-class wife are doing well, and the news that Enzo works with cars with Monica's father, or that Monica is a principal, doesn't impress him. He informs them about the offer for him to join a large auditing company in San Francisco, and how he plans to move. Damien then asks his mother to join him, and she doesn't seem interested, but says she'll think about it. After dinner, the others head inside, and Monica's father, Basilie, is left alone with Damien. He offers to get some coffee for Damien, who's still seated, but he declines as he rudely claims he knows where to get it, stating that it's his mother's house. Damien firmly states that they're going to sell their house, and that his mom is moving with him, since she needs to be with and take care of her grandchildren. He seems to see Basily as an opportunist, especially since he is not rich like he is. When Basily disagrees with Damien by claiming his mother hasn't made her decision, Damien becomes even more infuriated. He is so sure that Basily got close to his mother for her money. The dinner ends in a flash, and Basily is left spacing out throughout. Enzo and Monica arrive at their house, satisfied with the lovely dinner. After sitting down, Monica calls for Enzo to read something on her laptop. As he does, they discover that she isn't actually pregnant but rather has a case of hyperprolactinemia, a condition of elevated prolactin levels in the blood. Of course, this news leaves him disappointed. He's afraid that she'll change her mind about their marriage. Monica just laughs while she assures him with a kiss, clarifying that she isn't in a rush to get married. In the next scene, Monica is excited during her fitting for her wedding gown. The gown is perfect and she loves it. Meanwhile, Enzo and Andazeg make it to their old parish. Uncle Victor is not surprised to see them as he's been expecting them for a year now. He even knows that Enzo is getting married. He informs Enzo, along with another priest, Stanislaw, that the wedding will take place in their parish, 
and that he needs to bring back his past lover, Yua, who has been left devastated after their relationship, into the Christian community. Enzo can't seem to remember clearly who he's talking about, but he acts like he does. He warns that Enzo cannot enter into a life of happiness without making amends for his previous sins. This statement leaves Enzo and Andazedge dumbfounded. As they head back, Andazedge wonders how he can't remember who he dated just a few years ago. This is when Enzo admits that there might have been more than one Yua. He asks Andazedge to help him explain to Monica. Andazedge tells him that he has to do it himself, since he is his elder brother. He refuses to help, telling Enzo to grow up instead. In their home, Monica, Enzo, Jacek, Andazedge, and Anya are seated when Enzo and Andazedge explain that they have a problem. Enzo reveals that he has to deal with an ex called Yua and he's not even sure who it is. He apologizes to Monica for the awkward situation he put her in. Jacek asks if he can't go to another church, and they admit they can't, since their uncle won't get off their case. Andazedge advises him to write a list of all the Yuas he has dated, as if he is embarking on a journey to find his ex-lover. Enzo collects the car keys to a car that is like a dowry for Monica from Baisley, who tells him to treat the car like his daughter. He trusts Enzo even though he doesn't know what is going on. After all is set, the journey begins. Enzo and Anya go around meeting all the Yuas he has dated before. All of them have already moved on from Enzo. And so far, none of them seems to be the one the priest is referring to. They head to the last one which is an artist, and Ana is unsure if they tracked the correct one, but Enzo believes he did. He is also reminded that they have to take her to Father Wichter. While they are in the car, they see you and her husband along with their child. The husband tries to stop her from walking away and they get into a fight about art. When Enzo steps out of his car, Yua hugs him, happy to see him once again. Seeing his car, she puts her bags inside along with her son, and they leave together. In the car, she talks about how she has always known they'll meet once again since the stars told her, adding that she's been dreaming about him a lot. Enzo tries to ask her a question, but Yua goes on about how they're going to Warsaw, where she'll put up an exhibition, hoping Antic, her son, will like it. Enzo asks if she resents him because of their breakup, and Yua wonders what he's talking about. She offers to drive and suggests that they stop at an inn. But Enzo refuses, as he just wants to get home. Unfortunately, Antic and Anya are asleep already, and they have to go to the inn. The inn brings bad news as they have only one family suite left, and Enzo has no choice but to take it. Yua puts her son to sleep and prepares to take a bath, allowing Anya and Enzo to talk. He promises Anya, who he tells to sleep on the couch, that he'll settle everything with Yua and talk to Monica on his own before looking for her. Enzo then gets a call from Monica asking for updates, so he informs her that everything is almost taken care of and that they'll return the next day. The environment turns noisy and Monica can't hear what he's saying, so he lies about the TV interfering with the call. Enzo then finds Yua drinking and having fun with some men. Oddly enough, he smiles as he watches her. After this, he carries her in her drunken state. This is when Yua reveals that Antic is his son, stunning Enzo. The next day, Enzo finds out that Antic's taste is similar to his. He pulls Yua aside, asking her why she didn't tell him, so she admits that she didn't want to make him feel responsible. He informs her that he needs to take her to a priest, who will tell her everything. She's confused but he promises to explain later. At the garage, Basilie's employee, Wieseek, disturbs him, asking why he's in such a sour mood. Basilie gets a call from Alexandra, but he doesn't pick it up, lying that he's in a meeting. Wieseek, who peeped, tells him that she's out of his league, making Basilie annoyed. Enzo and Yua make a stop to get something. He asks her to follow her, fearing that she might do something stupid. She complies reluctantly. Yua later picks a pair of sunglasses for Enzo after trying it on. She excuses herself as she needs to pee, and when Enzo sees Anya later on, he knows something is wrong. Unfortunately, he is unable to make it on time as Yua has taken the car and zoomed off to nowhere. In the car, Yua and Antic have fun on their ride, and she doesn't pick up when Enzo tries calling his phone that is left in the car. When Enzo's phone gets a call from Monica, Yua picks it up, announcing that it's her and Antic. She tells her that she hopes they get along when they meet. This leaves Monica confused. Meanwhile, Enzo is pacing as he tries to contact Yua. Then, she suddenly returns. She informs him about Monica's call. When they resume driving, the car is filled with nothing but Yua's chatter. When Enzo asks about her plan, she admits that meeting the priest might be a good idea, and she also mentions thinking about getting a job. She adds how the situation offers a good opportunity for Enzo to get to know his son more. At school, the former principal, now superintendent, makes an impromptu visit for an audit. He is disappointed because the school is a mess. Monica is currently acting as a substitute teacher, but she is unable to fully focus on the class since she is also juggling her other responsibilities as a principal. One of the parents even approaches her while teaching to complain about her child. Later, one of the faculty members informs her of the unexpected audit from the insurance company. She then leaves the class for a moment, letting another faculty member take over. Even when they try to avoid the superintendent, they accidentally stumble upon him. Monica asks about the results of his visit, hoping for the worst, but he informs them that the real audit starts the next day and leaves right after. At home, Monica is relaxing on her chair with headphones on, when Yua comes in. 
She happily greets Monica, stating she is glad to finally meet her. Antic introduces himself, and Yua continues talking, mistaking Monica for a maid, saying she didn't have to clean for them. Naturally, Monica is annoyed, blaming Enzo for what is happening. Dinner is a disaster since Yua keeps doing odd things, and talking a lot, because she's drunk. That night, in their room, Enzo and Monica make up, mentioning how he appreciates her for letting Yua and Antic stay. She wonders why he didn't simply tell her about Antic and he reveals he didn't know about him. Still, they're annoyed since they keep getting interrupted by Yua, but they can't do anything about it. The next morning, Monica wakes up alone in bed. She smiles when she walks downstairs to see Enzo lying beside Antic, but is further startled by the sound of the blender, thus, her attention is diverted to Yua. The hyperactive woman hugs her, apologizing for the previous night's drunken antics. Yua asks if Monica would like some coffee, but she doesn't. When Enzo wakes up, he kisses Monica immediately. Yua feels jealous, asking him if he wants coffee instead. When he accepts, Monica feels jealous. She hates the way Yua behaves around Enzo. She also hates the way she dresses, which is too revealing for her taste. Monica walks up to Enzo, kisses him, and reminds him of the wedding appointment they have. But their moment doesn't last long since Yua starts yapping about her time with the lover, making the atmosphere uncomfortable. She also offers to rearrange Monica's kitchen. That being the last straw, Monica walks out to get ready for work. Yua shows a pitiful face to Enzo. Unfazed, he tells her to get ready since they have to go. Later, Monica and her dad are at the cemetery with Weeseek, and she reveals that even though she never wanted a family, she's jealous of them. Weeseek warns that Yua is the type to pretend to be poor, and she might run off with her money and her husband. Basily tries to drag him away, but Weeseek continues planting seeds of doubt, asking if Antic is truly Enzo's son. He claims to know an investigator that might help, but he is dragged away by Basily before he can continue. Unfortunately, Monica is now more anxious because of what he said. When Enzo and Yu arrive at the church, Enzo tells her that he loves Monica and wants to marry her, requesting that she should forget their pasts, but he also promises to be an antic's life. When they step inside, Father Wichter greets them. He refuses to talk to Enzo and listens only to Yua who says the opposite of what Enzo said earlier. She claims that Enzo took care of them and wants to be in Antic's life, recounting his good deeds. Father Wichter is satisfied and agrees to set a date for his wedding in three weeks. He then sends him to his brother. Meanwhile, Stainta warns Enzo that Father Wichter is always watching. At home, Enzo is preparing to go to work. He begs Yua, who's on a call, not to come into the studio while he's working. Enzo's livestream starts, and while he is working, Antic comes in, interrupting him and running around. Surprisingly, instead of getting angry, he enjoys a fun chase with his son. He even introduces himself to the viewers, and they love it. Later, Enzo and Yu are drinking champagne together and reminiscing, when Monica walks in. She's annoyed but hides, while Enzo explains that Antic walking onto his stream made it his best stream so far. Unfortunately, Monica doesn't find this amusing implying that Antic is being used. The interaction of the ex-lovers annoys Monica, so she calls it a night. In their room, Enzo enters, trying to win Monica over while he explains that Yua is just being nice. Frustrated, Monica suggests that Yua might be lying about Antic. Enzo, who doesn't want to think about it, leaves irritated. In the next scene, Alexandra visits Basily in his garage. She wants to know why he hasn't been picking up her calls, wondering if he didn't like dinner. Upon her continuous questioning, he admits that he doesn't want to be bothersome to her and her son. When she says she doesn't mind splitting her time, he promises to call her. She watches his back as he heads in, continuing to wonder what is wrong. At school the next day, Monica meets with the superintendent, who commends her idea of upgrading the school in accordance to the 21st century. However, he points out she has two staff members who are stuck in the past. Suddenly, the fire alarm goes off in school, and it turns out it was pressed by the faculty member who thought the alarm didn't work. Meanwhile, Enzo is doing a live stream with Antic and things are going well. However, he is baffled when he gets a call from Marcin, his former colleague. At school, the two elderly women hands over their resignation letter to Monica because they heard her earlier discussion with the superintendent. They feel bad and didn't want to hold her back. This news saddens Monica greatly since she wants to keep everyone. As she sits outside, staring at the letters, she is visited by Alexandra, who is there to tell her about her worries. Alexandra narrates her struggles W.T. Basley, wondering if she has any ideas of what happened during the dinner. Monica thinks he wants to give her time with her son. This is when Alexandra realizes the next step to take. Meanwhile, Enzo receives a business proposal from Marcin since he's trending online under that tags, father, son, and car. Though he still holds a grudge against her, he's happy to be presented with the opportunity. He arrives home excited and sees you an antic. She asks if she can borrow some money. Since he's in a good mood, he gives her his card since she doesn't have hers. Immediately after he does, she heads out to find a job, getting into some man's car. Later, he realizes that taking care of Antic proves to be difficult since the boy doesn't want to eat. 
At night, the boy cries, demanding to see his mom while Enzo tries to call her. Monica sees them and becomes frustrated and annoyed at the boy's shouting. She raises her voice at him, making him whimper. However, she quickly apologizes while Enzo keeps trying to call Yua. The next morning, Yua still hasn't picked up and this is when Antic confesses that she disappears sometimes, leaving him with his grandmother or aunt. Monica asks if he knows where they can find her, but he doesn't. Assessing the situation, Enzo promises to call till she picks up. Realizing she's late, Monica bids them goodbye and reminds Enzo of their appointment at the restaurant in the afternoon. At work, Monica is happy to see the school stabilizing. She even watches a few elderly women play sports. Meanwhile, Enzo and Antic are together at the restaurant. Yua shows up from nowhere all of a sudden. She then answers questions as if she's the bride. The staff showing them around is confused when Monica arrives. After clarifying the misunderstanding, Antic drags a cover cloth breaking some glass cups, which means they have to pay for the damages. As they head home, Enzo apologizes to Monica, because he didn't know Yua would show up. Yua runs to catch up with them again. Fed up, Monica questions Yua intensely, and she answers all her questions. Enzo believes she's innocent. When Monica lectures her about the responsibility of being a mother, Yua gets annoyed. Monica also points out that she left Antic with them. Since Enzo is taking Yua's side, the enraged Monica suggests that the wedding be postponed. Monica goes to his father's garage but Basily is not there because he is having dinner with Alexandra. We seek notices something is wrong immediately after he sees her, and after finding out it's about Yua, he drops the brown envelope. It so happens that he hired a private investigator. He gives her the choice to open it. At a restaurant, Basily arrives, saying hello to Damien, but he's annoyed that he's there. Basily wants to leave, but Alexandra doesn't allow him. She takes her stand in front of her son, saying he only comes to see her twice, but Basily is the one who is always there for her. She states that she can help him with his children whenever she can, since she plans to visit often. However, she is not willing to move because she has her own life. Basily appreciates her initiative. Meanwhile at her home, Monica decides to open the brown paper. After dinner at the restaurant, Alexandra wants to know why he didn't let her know about his issue with Damien. He admits that he didn't want to interfere in her family affairs. This makes her wonder if he's scared to be with her. He admits he doesn't know, and when he tries to explain, she shuts him up with a kiss. The next morning, Monica goes downstairs, showing Enzo and Yua the evidence that she acquired. The investigation revealed that Yua is running from her creditors. Enzo doesn't want to believe this at first, but Yua acknowledges it. She also reveals that she doesn't know if Antic is actually his son, which devastates Enzo. She apologizes, promising to pack and leave immediately. Later on, Enzo stands by the window staring into space. Sensing Monica behind him, he asks if she hired a private investigator, and she confesses that she wasn't the one who did. She tries to console him, but he's beyond livid, agreeing with her when she says she shouldn't have read it. In a fit of rage, he accuses her of taking away his son because she doesn't want one. This statement infuriates her, she claims that she can't just sit and wait for him to marry another woman. Enzo then makes it clear that he isn't interested in Yua. Confused, Enzo doesn't know how he let Yua come between them. Monica admits she also doesn't know that having a son was such a big deal for him. The next day, at a restaurant with Jacek, Monica tries to reach Yua but to no avail. She feels bad that she read the investigation, but Enzo's friend rightfully explains that she would have known in the end anyway. She wants Enzo to be with someone who appreciates his desire to be a father. She is even considering calling off the wedding. He is surprised even more when Monica texts you with an offer to extend help. Meanwhile, Enzo is at Andazed's house, wondering why he is there. His friend admonishes him, asking why he didn't think of Monica's feelings in that situation, even though he wanted to care for his son. He then asks Enzo if he wants to call the wedding off and Enzo admits he needs time to think. Andazed also rightfully advises him that starting a family is a decision between two people and Enzo can't force it on anyone. The next day, Andazedge and Jacek head to the parish to see Father Wichter. He said that they have to come on behalf of the the couple. They ask if the wedding can be postponed, but Father Wichter refuses, stating that people need to work hard to maintain their love. He orders them not to tell Enzo and Monica anything, explaining that sometimes love needs to be saved, even though the main characters are stubborn. In school, Monica receives a farewell card from two teachers. When she heads to the inaugural integration picnic, she comes across the superintendent who praises her for sacking the two elderly women. He adds that he didn't think she'd have the guts to do it, a comment that doesn't sit well with her. On the stage during her speech, she admits that she doesn't want the school to lose itself because of the 21st century vision she has, which may not include the elderly. She refuses the elderly women's resignation and rips their resignation letters. Then, she announces her resignation and plans to go back to where she had always belonged, with the children. The crowd cheers loudly, while the former principal shouts that he knew she would be bad for the job. Meanwhile, Yua, who's standing by the beach, calls Monica asking for help, and Monica is ready to help. 
Meanwhile, Enzo is having a meeting with Marcin, who tries to entice him with an offer that seems suspicious. Enzo refuses, feeling satisfied with what he currently has. We then see Monica meeting Yua at the beach. She apologizes for hurting her, admitting that she thought Enzo could be her chance for a normal life. She had borrowed a lot and was so desperate that she almost got married to a wealthy farmer, but she knows her life wouldn't have been like Monica's and Enzo's. Monica offers to help look for an apartment, revealing that her wedding has been called off, a statement that catches Yua off guard. On their supposed wedding day, Enzo wakes up to the alarm saying it's his wedding, but he just stares into space. Meanwhile, Monica wakes up to the alarm and looks through her pictures with Enzo. At the church, Damien meets Alexandra and Basily, apologizing for his past behavior. He promises to stay with his mother longer, while offering a friendly handshake to Basil. In the next scene, Monica is in a car wondering where Jacek is taking her. She doesn't recognize the route. It turns out he was stalling until they reached the church, breaking the news that they didn't call the wedding off. On the other hand, Enzo discovers that they didn't call off the wedding because he sees Ania is wearing pantyhose, something she hates wearing the most. His brother advises him to be truthful to himself call the wedding off himself if he doesn't want to marry. Enzo and Monica see each other and finally decide to have a solemn talk. Enzo admits he wants to be a father, but Manila is not ready to be a mother. While this is happening, the church is full of people waiting for the bride and groom. Outside, Monica and Enzo are still deliberating if they should call off the wedding or not. Enzo eventually admits that he still loves her. In the hall, the guests are tired of waiting, but after a moment, the couple finally walks in together and everyone cheers. Thankfully, their wedding attire arrived just in time and finally, the wedding officially begins. The bride walks in with her father and she joins the groom. After that, Father Wichter gives a wonderful speech about how love is similar to honey. He also mentions that love comes unexpectedly, either at first sight or as a spark of infatuation. He calls it squared love. The groom and bride kiss as they begin their new journey of love. The wedding turns out to be a success. They also establish a co-parenting relationship with Yua, accepting Antic as their son. 